and we have to change the change the behavior in order to change the mental behavior that is the emphasis is given so given to the behavioral uh, aspect and uh, sigmund freud emphasizes that we have to investigate into the mentality that means there are three levels you know the unconscious subconscious and conscious levels then the in childhood we have deposited our experiences so our oppressions of our uh, uh, because you know uh, according to him there are two aspects of the mind that is sex and aggression then the feelings etc that arise in relation to the uh, aggression and sex we oppress or we repress them then uh, that is unconscious and they come to the middle level and then uh, we are trying to uh, overcome them by the conscious uh, efforts then we have to spend much energy for that right that because of that there arise many mental disorders therefore he has given the uh, important place to the psychoanalysis model that means you know uh, in the cognitive therapy in buddhism panya means both that means we have to analyze the uh uh cognitive aspect that means understanding you know what is the process of understanding and how uh, mental disorders are connected with that therefore i compare panya uh, with psychoanalytic model and uh, biological model presented by uh, krepling actually it is not a specific method in buddhist tradition because buddhism from the beginning actually in regard to the behavioral therapy that means under the seal for example let us say uh, we have precepts right one precept is not to take food in unsuitable times right that means you know uh, not only in the night that means you know uh, when we observe the eight precepts it means we are refraining from uh taking food afternoon but there is another precept used by common people every day diva vikala bhojana veramani sikkapadam samadhiya the other one is vikala bhojana veramani sikkapadam samadhiya it means i refrain from taking food afternoon but this one is diva vikala bhojana veramani sikkapadam samadhiya i refrain from taking food in the day time in unsuitable times it means after taking breakfast we don't take anything until we take the uh, lunch then after the lunch we don't take any food until the uh, dinner like that you know they are they are and also uh, in buddhism especially in the vinaya pitaka besajya khandaka chapter on medicine buddha has said clearly there is no difference between medicine and food right food itself is medicine according to our tradition if we understand the importance of uh, and uh, good defects of many vegetables etc then no need any special medicine because medicine and food are one concept in buddhist tradition therefore we no need any biological treatment separately but however uh, as far as ayurvedic tradition is concerned there are some such remedies but as far as buddhism is concerned uh, if we follow the uh, the buddhist theory of food and drinks actually it is a separate course that we are conducting in university level food and drinks that it is a food science actually therefore if we follow that model then i think very rarely we need medicine right that is why uh, i can uh, co- connect the biological uh, model to the moral uh, the behavioral therapy right uh, the uh, food uh, the the practices related to food and drinks are also included in behavioral therapy right and the next question uh, someone has suggested that normal level that i i mentioned three levels normal level middle level and final level 
of the development of the mental uh, conditions. That means in the first level, likes and dislikes and unrest. Because we try in this world to achieve many things and to reject many things. That means aggression and sex, uh, as uh, uh, Sigmund Freud says, because we need many things. Therefore, we are searching for them to have obtain and we don't need some other things which are against our survival. Then we want to reject them. These are called likes and dislikes. But no one is satisfied with these two attempts because every time, sometimes we are successful, sometimes we are not successful. Because of this uh, successful and unsuccessful effects, our mentality is always in unrest. There, that is the byproduct of uh, those two likes and dislikes, and byproduct is unrest. Then that is the first normal level. Uh, that this uh, someone has suggested that normal level may be normal neurotic model, right? That means you know, even in Buddhism, Buddhism means in the commentarial literature, it is definitely said that sabbe putujjana ummattaka vya. All ordinary people are like madmen, right? Therefore, it is okay in the normal level also, we have one rest. Then all ordinary beings are in a state of neurotic uh, level, right? It is okay. And the middle level, that means second level of the development of these three aspects. Likes are developed up to greed. Dislikes are developed up to hatred. Unrest is developed up to delusion. Uh, these are called greed, hatred, and delusion, the second level of divide, de development of the mental conditions. Then these are called unwholesome. That is why in Buddhism, always we are advised to reduce greed, hatred, and delusion. That is the second level. And the third level is active level. That means greed is transformed into abhijja. Abhijja means strong greediness, right? And uh, hatred is developed to vyapada, ill will. And moha or delusion is developed up to wrong will. Then once we have these three models, that means the third level, we are active in the society. When we have the middle level, we are, we need psychotherapy, right? We need psychotherapy because no one knows whether we have problems, mental disorders. They are inside. They, they, in that level, we need psychotherapy. And uh, when we have the third level, that means when, when we are active in the society uh, by those three, that means uh, strong greed and ill will and wrong view. When, now keeping these three aspects in mind, we are active in society then it is harmful to the society. Therefore, we have to stop that wrong behavior first. That is why we have to apply morality in the third level in order to restrain them. Then they are reduced up to the second level. That means we need psychotherapy, right? Then you know, then now we are in the normal. Then in the normal level, we have to apply panya. That means cognitive level. Then we can stop our rebirth. That is the final, final one, right? That is how I compare these three levels and the three uh, levels of therapies. Then uh, another one has us references. Actually, you know, uh, we told you that we have prepared a short book for all this course, including all aspects of Buddhism, astrology, and Ayurveda. Then we will introduce it next week. Then uh, we will discuss with you how to obtain the copy, okay? And also, you know, there are many other references. Uh, I have given all these references in the book. Uh, I, I have published another one book uh, in English in Hong Kong. It is published in Hong Kong, right? It is also Fundamentals of Buddhism and Ayurveda for Psychiatry and Counseling. It is published by the uh, by a institute in Hong Kong. And uh, there are many other uh, <coughs> works uh, published by me in regard to psychology, uh, you know, and uh, an introduction to Theravada Abhidhamma, 
and uh, reality and expression and uh, concept the early buddhist philosophy and social concepts early buddhist philosophy and social ethics uh, etc there are many i think more than 15 books i have published uh, they also include some elements related to this uh, but however particularly for this for, uh, this aspect that means buddhist psychology uh, psychotherapy and counseling those uh, the, we are doing we have al already published one and there are short three books and in single is about five books all are belonging to this uh, uh, subject because this is a new subject new subject means it is not my own but however i have interpreted the fundamentals of buddhist teachings in order to uh, uh, introduce new new system right there are many books and in the future you will be informed about them and also another uh, question was regarding sankara uh, food to uh, increase uh, because uh, uh, someone has interpreted that i i explained uh, i explained the simile uh, given to the five aggregates by venerable buddha gosa in visuddhi magga he compares rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana form feelings perceptions dispositions and consciousness uh, form or body is uh, compared with the hospital right it is the hospital all the whole body is compared with the hospital and feelings are compared to illness illness right but illness has not arisen yet but feeling becomes a illness because you know once we experience a feeling we keep it as a memory and we are chasing after that feeling to get it again and again then it becomes a problem no right that is the mental disorder actually because we experience many feelings and we are searching for them everywhere right every day every time no that is a problem right therefore feelings are concerned with the illness and perception perception is memory once we keep these experiences as a memory then we reflect over the memories and we are searching for the same feelings again and again then it is compared to rising of the illness right rising of the illness but if we experience the feeling and stop it no problem but what happens you know once we experience a feeling we keep it as a memory and we we need it again and again then in search of the feelings again and again there arise many problems right when we are trying to experience the same feeling again and again that is why perceptions or memories are compared with the arising of the feeling then sankara means concepts concepts means you know once we uh, searching for the feelings according to our memories then we experience the same feeling again and again for a certain period of time right then as a result those memories are transformed into strong ideas strong concepts this position right it is compared as taking unsuitable food to increase the disease right uh, that means you know because of concepts we we are decreasing uh, we are increasing our problem for example let us say uh, one one example you know that for example why people get married right why people get married basic aim of marriage is to produce children that's all right nothing else basic requirement of marriage is to produce children then is that the aim now thousands of other aims are connected with marriage then people have to face with many problems because their aim is now changed therefore you know unnecessary concepts 
how many unnecessary concepts are connected with the marriage life. That is why the marriage has become a problem. Right? Marriage is a big problem now all over the world. Right? Divorce cases and uh, problems between the parents and children. All these problems have arisen. We, why? We have developed many unnecessary concepts regarding the marriage life. People think marriage is for enjoyment. If you want to enjoy, no need to get married. Because if you get married, it is a problem for enjoying. If you, if you want to enjoy the life, stay alone. Right? That's the best way. But if you get married, then produce the children properly. That is the main purpose. Right? It is not for enjoyment. Family. Right? We, we develop a family, for, not for enjoyment, for the next generation. Right? Therefore, we have developed many unnecessary dispositions, concepts, and they have attached to the concept of marriage. Then thousands of problems arise in regard to the family system. Now it is destroyed. Uh, in many countries, family system is destroyed because they think uh, marriage, marriage is for enjoyment. That is the wrong concept. Like that, you know, when we uh, develop many wrong concepts, that disease is increased. That is why dispositions are compared to the increasement of uh, disease. It is compared to taking unsuitable foods to increase the illness. And the vinyana is the self-view. It is compared to the patient, right? Then uh, that is how I have uh, given that comparison given by Venerable Buddha goes. And uh, another one has suggested uh, self view and ego uh, formation. You know, both are same because self concept, uh, self view is developed as vijnana in the five aggregates because without the self view, we cannot survive in the world. Oh, it, it is the same thing as, uh, I think he has suggested uh, uh, ego formation. Ego formation. Ego should, we, we have to formate, form an ego concept. Actually, there is no such a thing or such, such a one because everything is in a process. Arising, vanishing, and arising, it is a process going on. But out of the process, in, in the process, we cannot establish ourselves in the uh, society. Therefore, we develop the concept of self or soul or I-ness or I, myself, like that. Then we have a firm ground in the existence that is called Pinyana. Then uh, Meditation and uh, counseling, someone has asked, but we are dealing with that in the future. And yoga, uh, someone has suggested that yoga is similar to these uh, things. Actually, you know, uh, Patanjali is the author of Yoga Sutra, right? Yoga Sutra in Hinduism. Uh, the first, uh, the first theorem, the first statement of Yoga Sutra is Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda. The fundamental idea of yoga is to calm down the mind, right? Mental functions. Chitta Vritti Niroda, cessation of the functions of the mind. Actually, it refers to the concentration, right? In Buddhism, Sila Samadhi Panya. This samadhi level, what we are doing is we are uh, reducing the unnecessary functions of the mind and we balance the mental behavior that is called samadhi. It is actually achieved in, even in yoga by means of many uh, methods. Now I think uh, the questions that you have asked are all. Uh, then I think now we have to give a short, uh, very summary of the last uh, lecture because you know some were absent uh, for that lecture 
therefore i will give in brief a summary of the formal lecture now first of all we will start uh, with the vision and mission right vision and mission yeah you know uh, vision and mission that is i have explained it you know uh, there are two visions and two missions for the buddhist sangha or clergy and lay people the as the vision of the buddhist sangha that means community of sangha i gave uh, that buddha Uh, has introduced the system of ordination by right? getting ordination in that ceremony the one who wants to become a monk he keeps in his hands a robe and he offers to the preceptor or teacher this robe saying like this o venerable sir having taken the, this robe please give me ordination in order to make an end to the mass of suffering uh, indicated by birth disease decay and death that is the vision for the monks and nuns in order to make an end to the mass of suffering dukkha then you know in the mahavagga pali it is recorded that uh, addressing the first 60 monks who were arahants already buddha gave them the mission statement of buddhism charata bhikkave charika o venerable o venerables go forth go forth to from village to village city to city preach the dhamma which is good at the beginning good in the middle and good at the end and for the sake of deity and layman right and explain the path to purification and for attaining nibbana actually that is the uh, mission statement of buddhism for the clergy and for the lay people also we can understand in dhamma pada there is a stanza arogya paramalabha physical well being santutti paramandhana mental well being uh, vissasa paramanyati uh, social well being and uh, nibbana paramam sukham spiritual well being these are the this is the vision for the uh, lay people and mission you know mission is stated in many discourses in various ways actually following the middle path including behavioral mental and cognitive training sila samadhi panya it is the common part or common mission for all uh, clergy and lay people and also you know performing one's duties towards parents teachers family members friends and relatives workers and clergy all of, all of us who are living in a society we have social duties therefore we have to uh, perform them that is also included in the mission of the lay people and also you know developing the soft skills soft skills like this faith morality shamefulness uh, fearfulness for uh, wrong doings and education generosity and wisdom these are the soft skill that we have to develop in our personality and also you know uh, the middle path is given under three stages right and also it is explained under eight factors that means what we call noble eightfold path right view right thoughts right speech right actions right livelihood right effort right mindfulness and right concentration these eight aspects are divided uh, into three aspects general understanding of the path that means right view and right thoughts means actually before we practice 
we have to get a general understanding. Although we compare it with the wisdom, but wisdom is not the general understanding. It, it, is, it is general understanding here it means. But once we complete the uh, noble eightfold path, this general understanding becomes a, a personal experience. It is called wisdom. But here in this state, it is the normal understanding. Then we start with morality. That means restrainment of the external behavior. It means, you know, right speech, right action. Right speech means refraining from lying, uh, harsh words, uh, tail bearing, and useless talk. Right actions means refraining from killing, stealing, committing adultery. Right livelihood means, you know, we have to uh, follow uh, just means for life. That means uh, refraining from bad uh, trading, etc. We have to engage in a suitable profession for living. And uh, next stage is mental uh, restrainment. That means right effort. Right effort means, you know, uh, to uh, decrease the bad thoughts and also to increase, we are we should take effort to decrease or downgrade our bad bad thoughts and to increase our good thoughts. Right? These are the two attempts. Right? And uh, also we have to take another two effects. You know, in Buddhism, whatever do you have any bad action or mentality, you have to try to. Uh, stop them. And also, uh, if you have good thoughts and actions, you have to try to develop them. And also, you know, there are another two uh, efforts. If you don't have some bad actions and bad thoughts still, you have to try not to let them to arise. Right? We have to try that even unarisen bad thoughts and actions should not be allowed to arise. It is also an attempt of effort. And also, if you don't have some good actions and good thoughts, still you have to try to produce them in the future. Uh, these are the four attempts. Those are called right effort. And right mindfulness, you know, right mindfulness means in regard to every action of life, we should be mindful. Gate when going, tite when standing, nisinne when we are seated, gate tite sutte when we are sleeping, gate tite nisinne sutte jagarite when we are not sleeping, uh, jagarite asite when we are eating, when we are drinking, pite khaite when we are eating the sweets, etc., asite pite khaite when we are tasting ice cream, etc., you know, asite, pite, kaite, saite, alokite, when we are, we are looking uh, front side, alvilokite, uh, when we are looking around, alokite, vilokite, samningite, when we are uh, stretch, stretch in our hands, etc., pasarite, uh, when we are stretching out our hands, etc., samningite, pasarite, uh, when we are, go, uh, go, we, we are going to toilet, in all such activities, we should be mindful. That is called mindfulness, right? And also right concentration. That means, you know, developing the concentration through the transfers, etc. Now, this is the middle part that I have explained. Then, you know, uh, next one is, uh, psychosomatic analysis of uh, person, psychosomatic analysis of person, right? That I have explained last week, uh, psychosomatic analysis of uh, person, that uh, there is a graph, right? Uh, psychosomatic analysis of a person, actually it refers to the five aggregates five aggregates. Person, according to Buddhism, person means five aggregates. Form, feeling, perception, disposition, and consciousness. 
actually these five even modern uh, psychology they are referring to these five you know physical body is accepted by all but when we, uh, see those uh, uh, explanations in the modern psychology i will give one example you know last time also i mentioned you know they are talking about the feeling perception right and uh, thinking right etc you know all are related to these uh, feelings perceptions dispositions and consciousness that is why you know here in this uh, per, uh, the psychosomatic analysis of person then rupa form form means i ear nose tongue and skin they they are respective objects are color and shapes sounds smell taste and touch then you know uh, we have uh, a sense called mind it is the sixth sense it is not uh, uh, something connected with the brain uh, because brain is not the mind mind is the uh, sixth sense maybe mind is connected with the brain right but however mind has two functions first one is that it helps to perceive the objects through the senses right in that sense in that context we call uh, you know chakku vinya eye consciousness ear consciousness nose consciousness tongue consciousness and skin consciousness and mind also has an independent process of thinking then depending on these sense data uh, we create feelings right then feelings may be happy unhappy and uh, neutral that means you know mostly we have neutral feelings because you know uh, when we eat something very tasty then happy feeling right and when we are suffering from an illness unhappy feeling but you know when now you are focusing on this uh, program then you can see the floor you can see the ceiling and you can see the walls etc you are indifferent to them those are called neutral feelings right these are the three kinds of feelings and also you know these feelings are transformed into perception that is called memory memories right signs of feelings once we keep uh, once we experience a feeling we keep it as a sign in mind because we need it again when we need the same feeling again we recall we reflect over the memory and create the same feeling uh, and uh, that is called vitakka you know reflection it is called vitakka in buddha's discourse reflection on memories and as a result what happens they are transformed into dispositions right strong concepts uh, created as a result of con- constant reflection on Uh, memories right they are called disposition that means concepts we are building up many concepts but ha- what happens you know we are the people who develop these uh, concepts but after creating concepts we are governed by the concepts we have become the slaves of concepts we are the builders but however we are governed by concepts what are those concepts i am a buddhist i am a christian i am a sri lankan i am an american i am a, i am a british uh, I, i i am a professor i am a doctor right i am a poor fellow i am a farmer uh, like this you know all these are concepts then you know we are guided by those concepts right then you know consciousness means concept of self uh, created by grasping concepts as mind and ainas as a whole all these concepts are taken as mind in order to build up the self view right actually if we ask you to explain or introduce you what you are introducing is nothing else you are concepts all are your concepts you know actually the person is a con- congregation of various concepts right They, that is that is what i explain uh last uh, week uh you know uh, actually we have to understand that these five aggregates have not been added anything in the modern uh, analysis if you go to the psychological explanations of 
mentality, you get only these four, right? Actually, they call vijnana as mind, right? And also they say dispositions means thoughts, right? They say they say uh, perceptions. Uh, you know, memories are called perceptions, and feelings are called emotional aspects. Same thing. Actually, then I divided these uh, these five aggregates into three main aspects. First one is physical. The feelings and memories belong to the emotional aspect, and disposition and consciousness belong to the cognitive aspect. Then you know morality should be applied to restrain the five senses, right? That actually by following the observing the precepts means nothing else. We restrain our senses in looking, in hearing, in smelling, in tasting, and in touching. That is moral behavior, right? Then actually person's behavior in relation to the external world. External world is nothing else, color and shapes, sounds, smell, taste and touch. These are available in the external world. Then person means five sense faculties. That means, you know, we have to restrain this behavior as the first step. Without doing this, no any psychotherapy cannot be done. Because, you know, first of all, this is essential. Behavioral therapy is the must. It should be done in regard to all other mental problems. Without that, we cannot cure them at all, right? Because that is the basis that, that we gather all data by these five senses. If we don't restrain the five senses, how can uh, restrain the mentality or understand, right? And also feelings and perceptions means emotional aspect. That is emotional, right? That means those are actually connect, uh, mainly strong uh, in young generation. Actually, emotional aspect is because young people uh, have their faculties very strong. Therefore, they are always searching for feelings. Therefore, I think uh, their mental problems are always related to feelings and memories, right? That is why I say these feelings and dispositions uh, are, feelings and uh, perceptions are related to the emotional aspect. And there is another reason for that. If you take the meditational subjects recommended to see uh, Samadhi and Panya, all the a meditational subject recommended for samadhi belongs to the feelings. You know, Buddha Anusati, 10 Anusatis, 10, 10 reflections, you know, reflections on the Buddha's qualities, Dhamma, Sangha, etc. All are feelings, you know. And also, uh, Dasa Asuba, you know, Asuba means feel the attitude in regard to the dead body, right? Then these are also feelings, right? Unhappy feelings, but anyway, they are, we are concentrate on them not to develop unhappiness, but anyway, to make neutral them. But however, there are 40 subjects re recommended for concentration. All these are mostly connected with the emotional aspect. That is why samadhi can be applied to restrain the emotional aspect. That means psychotherapy. And also dispositions and consciousness. Actually, it is a cognitive process. We are building up the concept of I-ness, right? Then it is related to the realization or understanding. Therefore, actually, cognitive therapy should be applied to resolve the uh, mental disorders related to the understanding. That means uh, in Buddhist context, uh, insight meditation is recommended for that. But in ordinary level, we have to discuss in detail uh, uh, actually the causal relationship of the mental disorder. Then once we understand, then it will be over. As especially these, this kind of mental problems are uh, mainly related to the adult people. Therefore, uh, these uh, five aggregates have been divided into three parts, moral therapy, behavioral therapy, uh, uh, psychotherapy, and Cognitive therapy. Uh, you know, first one 
uh, is rupa or form, it means we have to apply the behavioral therapy in order to uh, restrain the problems related to the behavior. And uh, in order to uh, overcome the mental disorders related to the feelings and perceptions, we have to follow the psychotherapy, that means samadhi. Uh, and also mental disorders related to the dispositions and consciousness, we have to apply the uh, cognitive therapy, that means uh, the insight meditation in, in the spiritual level. However, uh, in modern uh, works on Buddhism, they are talking about the five aggregates and they are talking about the three steps, uh, three stages of uh, restrainment. But no one connects this, but I have connected like this. So, Sila Samadhi Panya in regard to the five aggregates. If, the, if all the mental disorders arise in regard to the five aggregates, then this three therapeutic measures also should be uh, able to uh, use in regard to those mental disorders. Therefore, you have to keep in mind Buddhist psychology as far as counseling and psych uh, psychotherapy are concerned. We have to study in detail these two subjects, five aggregates and threefold training system, right? That I have explored, uh, explained last time. Now today, you know, causes and conditions that influence mental behavior. It's a graph, right? Causes and conditions that influence the mental disorder, uh, mental behavior. This I have taken from a, a book. I think a reference is given. You can see, you know, uh, causes, uh, causes and conditions that influence the mental behavior. I think uh, down, you can see the uh, reference I have given. Uh, 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 downside, you know, there is, uh, I have given, I think, here, no? Uh, the name of the text I had given, but however, I cannot see here. But however, we'll start, you know, here are given all the courses. It is a, it is a work on psychology. In my book, I have given the reference, right? And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, psychoanalytic psychotherapy, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paolino, yeah. Paolino, Psychoanalytic Psychotherapy, New York, 1981, page 16, right? Thomas J. Paulino. And now let us, uh, let us see the graph, right? Then you know here uh, that the hu uh, human behavior and uh, psycho uh, functioning, right? Then uh, this says that there are two kinds of causes and conditions. One is related, one part is connected to the body and the other one is external uh, environment. You know, as far as the human body is concerned, genetic factors, you know, genetic factors means that what we have inherited by birth. Actually, Buddhism goes further, this aspect, you know, according to Buddhism, we, our life does not begin with this life. We are wandering through the existences in an innumerable period of time. Therefore, our subconscious is embedded with many experiences uh, that we have got in our previous lives. All these are genetic, these are genetic factors, right? Actually, Buddhist term for that is karma, right? Karma means actually early experiences. And the next one is, you know, neurological factors. Neurological, actually, it is also connected with the mentality uh, because uh, neuro, neurotic means actually there are some channels. According to Ayurveda, there are channels that uh, uh, influence for the uh, spread of many things uh, in the body. You know, there are two channels according to Ayurveda. One is called, you know, Chesta. Uh, one, one channel uh, transports the ideas that arise in our mind, right? 
the ideas that arise our mind are transformed uh, or uh, sent to the relevant parts of the body that is called uh, sanya vahi uh, sanya vahi uh, the the vehicle uh, the, the the channels the channels which uh, which forces the uh, traveling of ideas and also sanya vahi sanya vahi means uh, when the external stimuli is given they are taken to the uh, mind right that there, there are two kinds of channels uh, exchange the mental ideas and mental perceptions and feelings therefore you know i think these ne neurological factors uh, are connected with them and chemical factors you know chemical factors according to our tradition you know buddhism as well as ayurveda all uh, material things right and the physical body right here physiological factors are also included then you know the chemical uh, activities and physical changes in the body are caused by the four great elements uh, you know uh earth water fire and more yeah right that means these are the fundamental natures of the material world earth water fire and air means solidity solidity means earth right solidity uh apo means the water means cohesion cohesion and uh, solidity cohesion uh, fire means temperature and air means motion right actually these four aspects some scholars have compared these four aspects with the construction of an atom you know in atom in an atom we have nucleus it's a solidity right and all atoms are moving right they are not static right they are always moving moving that nature is compared to air or motion right and also you know when the electrons are going around the nucleus when they change the tracks they discharge electrical charges those electrical charges are compared to temperature and also you know apo means cohesion all atoms cannot can cannot survive uh separately they are joined together right as circles that joint nature is called cohesion some scholars have compared the four natures of the atom with those four but however actually we have atomic theory separately in buddhism right in buddhism uh, we have an atomic theory actually it was introduced a uh, thousand year more than 1000 years before that means you know actually we are talking about a aggregate atom right uh, in theravada buddhism we talk of an aggregate atom even the smallest unit of matter smallest unit of matter includes eight titans eight titans right that solidity cohesion temperature motion uh, color smell uh, taste and nutrition these are the eight aspects including even in a smallest unit of matter it that means atom also divisible according to buddhism this was presented 1000 years before right and also this this basic eight factors are called atom then you know other factors are joined with that and these i ear nose etc all these have been made for example i will say i is called i decad it is a connection a collection of 10 items that means you know basic eight material elements are there right then uh, there is life force live aspect is, it is related to form a calm and also i sensitivity right i sensitivity now 10 you know eight material elements 
right? And also life force, it is connected with the former karma and eye sensitivity, it is also obtained as a uh, result of former karma. Then these eight items are called eye. Like that, you know, we have a atomic theory regarding all aspects. Therefore, you know, these chemical and uh, physiological factors can be combined to, with that. And also, this is very important external environment. You know, it includes uh, external physical world, uh, cultural and social, uh, social settings, and past and present uh, interpersonal experiences. You know, all these are related to the physical, external physical world and also our cultural setting. Therefore, you know, one half of these uh, causes and conditions are related to the environment and our cultural setting. Therefore, you know, cultural setting is very important as far as mental behavior is concerned. Because not only the physical aspect, but also external aspects. Therefore, uh, in order to solve the mental problems, there is much service that can be done through culture and society. Therefore, culture, culture includes, you know, religion, right, belief system, ceremonies, rites, rituals, etc. All these are related to culture and social activities. Therefore, culture and social activities play an important role as far as mental behavior is concerned. But you know, this is given in brief. Therefore, uh, as far as the Asian culture is concerned, I have prepared another graph including many other causes and conditions for the mentality. Actually, I have explained in the next uh, graph, we can refer to that, you know, uh, it is called physical, mental and environmental relationship, right? Physical, uh, physical, uh, mental and environmental factors, uh, how they are combined together, right? How they are combined together, uh, according to this graph, you can understand it. It is made by me. You know, here I have taken uh, three aspects, three aspects, right? Three main aspects. I think uh, You know, here I, I have compared uh, three humors and three mental factors, right? Uh, that means, according to Buddhism, there are three mental aspects which are considered as unwholesome, right? Uh, now here you can see, you know, on the top, you can see uh, air, bile, and flame, right? Uh, down you can see, then I have given the, uh, pal uh, the Pali term vata, vata means air, right? It is connected with, uh, you know, uh, there are three, you know, like this, loba, dosa, moha, right? Greed, hatred, and delusion. According to Buddhism, these are the unwholesome mental roles, right? Then, you know, according to uh, Raga, dosa, moha, Raga, dosa, moha, that means uh, greed, hatred, and delusion, you know, in connection with that, uh, three humors are connected. This is given in uh, Buddhism as well as in Ayurveda. Raga, you know, in the right side, Raga is connected with flame, right? Flame. Then uh, Dvesha, oh, that means 
uh, you know, greed or lust is compared to flame, right? And the head is compared to bile, right? I think you know bile. And delusion is compared to air, right? Then according to Ayurveda and according to Buddhism also, all physical diseases arise due to the imbalance of three humors. Three humors. Vata, Pitta, Kapha. Vata means air, Pitta means bile, Kapha means flame. You know, it is a, it, it can be understood very easily from heart to head. Yeah, right? In this part, actually, flame is very predominant. All the three humors are everywhere in the body, but however, from heart to head, flame is predominant. And in the digestive part, stomach, it is bile. You know, actually bile means digestive power, right? It is predominant in this part. And in the lower part, the air, it is motion, right? Like that. Then three humors should be in balanced form in order to have a balanced life, healthy life, right? Then I have, then their mentalities are greed, hatred, and delusion. Relative mental aspect, it states. Greed is connected with flame. Hatred is connected with bile, right? Delusion is connected with air, right? These are the comparison. Then I, in the left side, I have given about 27 or 22 or 27 connections with these three. Let us take first one. Now you can look at here, you know, then uh, connection with physical body, you know, then between the feet and the, uh, I think, uh, the lower part of the stomach, and it is connected with air, you know, between the embolic and the heart, that is bile, and between the, uh, between the heart and the uh, I think head, that, that is flame, and also connect, uh, connection with seasons, you know, uh, in regard to the seasons also, uh, there are, you know, uh, see, you can see personally this chart later, you know, that for example, you know, uh, the seasons are, in, in some seasons, flame is increasing, in some seasons, bile is increasing, in some seasons, uh, air is increasing. That, for example, let us say, you know, that in the childhood, right, flame is always increased because uh, children are suffering from flame problems. And in the middle age, bile is predominant. That means we feel hunger, right? We can eat much in the younger age. And in the old age, air. Yeah, Right? Like that. And also, as far as the day is concerned, in the morning, flame is predominant. In the middle, uh, in the middle of the day, hunger, bile is increased, right? Then in the afternoon, air. Yeah, like that, you know, uh, these three humors are connected with seasons, right? And also, you know, uh, connection with taste. You know, uh, there are, you know, Six, six days, that means, you know, uh, sweet, right? May here I have given pungen, bitter, and astringent. Uh, they are connected with air and, uh, you know, pungen, sour and salt connected with bile, sweet, sour and salt connected with greed. In, uh, you know, in regard to the three humors and three mental uh, aspects, tastes are connected, right? There are six tastes, 
all these six phases are connected with the mentality and physical aspects. Then you know connection with the time, you know, evening, noon, morning, and also uh, time of predominance, right? Uh, after the food uh, in the stomach is digested. Like that, you know, there are times and also age, right? That I have explained, function and also qualities. Uh, I think next day also we can deal with this uh, because I have to keep a personal one. It is very difficult to read this one. But however, please go through that. You can understand in Asian context, how these three humors and three mental aspects are interrelated. There are many connections, even physical aspects, astrological aspects, right? Even the pulses, you know, pulse system also is connected with that. Therefore, you know, in order to understand the mental behavior, we have to understand its many connections, right? In the form of graph, we understood that there are uh, physical factors and external factors, but here all these factors are given in detail, right? Actually, you can keep this chart as a guide for understanding the mental disorders. And also I will tell you, without understanding these various uh, connections of the mental disorders, we cannot recommend the treatment, right? Actually, you know, uh, physical and environmental relationship, life management. Then you know, uh, this is the reason. Then uh, I will give a, a small uh, little uh, example. Suppose one student has some problems in education, right? In education, there are three factors, three mental factors are very important as far as education is concerned. One is the student should be able to understand anything at once, understanding ability. Next one is to remember it, remembering ability, right? The student should be able to remember it well. And the next item is we should be able to recall it at any time, right? Without difficulty. These three aspects are called Dhi, Dhruti, and Smurti. Dhi means ability to understand anything without problem. When someone is explaining, we should be able to understand it clearly, right? And also, Dhruti means we should be able to keep it in our memory very cleanly. And next one is, Smurti means ability to recall it at any time. These three aspects of mentality should be very clear in order to develop education, right? Then these three aspects, you know, are connected with three humors. You know, ability to understand is connected with the bile. Bile means digestive system. If our digestive system is okay, then our ability to understanding, right? Ability of understanding is very clean, right? And remembering ability. Ability of remembering is connected with flame, you know, flame. Flame, you know, if the flame is in a balanced state in our body, then we can remember well. We can keep as a memory well. Our memory will be increased if our flame is in a balanced form. And also, you know, recalling ability is connected with the air element, right? Air element. Then, you know, air humor, right? It should be in a balanced form. That means, you know, according to Ayurveda, there are 80 diseases related to the imbalance of air, humor, right? Air. There are 40 diseases related to the bile, 
imbalance of bile, and that means digestive system. And there are 20 diseases related to the imbalance of flame. Then what we have, to, and also, you know, I told you, AI is connected with delusion, mentality. Bile is connected with hatred. Then flame is connected with greed. Then what, what to do? We have, it is a psychosomatic disease. That means this problem of uh, understanding or education is caused by not only the mental factors, but also the physical factors. Therefore, we have to recommend both mental counseling or psychotherapy or, uh, and also physical therapy. Both should be applied. Then according to our tradition, our normal uneducated people in the villages know how to uh, balance these humors. For example, flame, you know, flame is balanced normally. Uh, only one example, eh? ginger, you know, ginger is taken all the time uh, in our day-to-day -day life. Why? It can reduce flame. Right? And also bile, bile, you know, the heat of the body. It can be well balanced by taking cooling vegetables, fruits, etc., pumpkins, etc. Right? They are our daily foods. Right? Then you know air problems, like you know, onion, etc., we take in order to uh, reduce air. Then you know that kind of uh, uh, food system, right? Because I have given in the next lessons a list of uh, such foods and vegetables with pictures and with their uh, botanical names, right? Botanical terms I have given. Then we can understand as a counselor, once we understand that these three humors are not in a balanced form, then we have to recommend some foods and drinks and behavioral patterns in order to balance the three humors. Then after that, we can recommend any one of those three methods, that means behavioral therapy or uh, psychotherapy or cognitive therapy methods. In the future, we are going to explain them in detail. Then those methods can be recommended or used in order to balance the mental factors. Then in brief, what I say is, According to Buddhism and Ayurveda, all diseases are psychosomatic diseases, diseases psychosomatic disorders. We cannot separate uh, this is a mental one, this is a physical one. All are, uh, you know, according to Buddhism, body depends on mind, mind depends on body. Therefore, you know, body and mind both should be treated in order to uh, solve the mental problems, what we call. Therefore, you know, the counselor should have a good understanding of the three humors and three unwholesome roots, greed, hatred, and delusion, air, uh, bile, and flame, right? Then in the future lectures, I will give you many methods how to understand that. How, you know that, for example, uh, we can identify by means of other ways, what is the humor increased in this person, right? That means, you know, suppose that uh, they are given many details in even the Buddhist text, even Visuddhimagga, many signs are given, you know, suppose that if someone is uh, uh, walking very beautifully, right? Very beautifully and very carefully. And if someone is wears the garments very carefully, neatly, such people are lost characters, right? Actually, this, this world is beautified by those people. Lust character, right? Lust is an essential factor of uh, daily life in mundane life. And you know, hate characters. Hate characters, you know, are in a hurry. All are, uh, they are arguing with each other and they are making conflicts with, uh, with each other, right? Uh, they, they are very rude and if they are uh, sweeping, they, they will uh, do it very hardly. Like that, you know, according to the behavior, we can identify the hate characters. 
and delusion characters you know they don't do, do anything methodically they do something here and then again start another thing and all all things are mixed up right such such characters are uh, delusion characters and also on the other hand there are some people you know they like always sweets sweet sweet tasty right that taste is loved by them taste it is lust characters right and there are some people who like the sour and you know hot foods they are hate characters normally generally right and also you know there are some people no choice whatever it is they they eat right they are delusive delusion characters like that right and also you know when the lust characters sleep they sleep very beautifully keeping their limbs and all the things in order right beautiful and the hate characters you know taking hardly the pillow or something else they they sleep in a hard way right and also you know the delusion characters sleep may maybe keeping the hands and legs is scattered to rea like that you know and also you know uh, when they are talking you know when they are talking if someone is you using very beautiful words and uh, very kind words loving words etc they are lost characters right if someone is talking making conflicts you know if they are always against someone and arguing with each other they hate characters right and if someone is talking this totally you know no no connection beginning no beginning no middle no end like that you know disordered talk are given by delusion characters like that you know i will give many examples how to identify whether which which kind of humor is increase in one character and which kind of unwholesome root is increased in in one's character once we identify this then we can recommend some methods uh, you know physical as well as mental uh, therapies we can recommend in order to minimize these things therefore understand that uh, behavioral therapy and uh, you know behavioral therapy uh, psychotherapy and cognitive therapy behavioral therapy means we balance the behavior as the background for counseling right psychotherapy means we are reducing not eliminating we are reducing the unbalanced states of my, body and mind we are balancing and cognitive therapy means eliminating the problem these three methods are called tadanga vikambana and samucche because according to buddhism we have to follow three steps in order to eliminate the mental problems first one is behavioral therapy that means for the time being we we have to recommend something then samadhi or psychotherapy means for a certain period of time and middle term and uh, cognitive therapy is completely we can remove the disease like that and uh, now i think uh, uh, time has gone and the meta ko kere la ti in ne okay now i will uh, i have another uh, two uh, topics to discuss today but i will finish with one topic and uh, the last one i will explain next time now i am going to explain the methods we should know the counselor should know how to recommend many things right in in regard to many mental disorders when a person comes we have to arrange everything that means we should know how to arrange the life system how to arrange the mental system how to arrange the cognitive system right in this regard i will give some examples from here uh, by using many graphs right actually these are the interpretations of the buddhist discourse i think all of you are familiar with the mangala sutta i think you have heard no mangala sutta it is a very famous sutta in buddhism mangala sutta 
there are three suttas uh, all buddhist are familiar with those mangala ratana karani right mangala sutta explains the blissful factors blissful factors 32 then we are memorizing all the 32 right we are reciting the discourse but you know we have to make plans to put them into action then i have made seven step plan for mangala sutta not only for mangala sutta for many suttas because counselors should be aware of these things then they can easily recommend the uh, treatments for the uh, customers right today i will explain as the last item how we can interpret mangala sutta under seven steps i will refer i have not changed anything there right i am explaining the seven steps one by one stanzas okay first one i think all of you have heard maybe first stanza is asevanacha balanam panditanancha seva association with good people right but not to associate with bad people i am taking only the first items eh? second stanza says pati rupa desa vasu living in a suitable environment now i take only these two factors association with good people and living in a good environment environment and association see many psychological books what are the two factors for a child to adapt in the most essential two factors for the child life from birth to five years is association and environment right association and environment he this child should associate with good people then i think they will take as examples for his future life and also the child should lead the healthy life for that purpose we need good environment right the trees air etc all should be good no then see mangala sutta the first two stanzas refer to the childhood in childhood we should provide for the children good association and good environment that's the first step first step right then after five years we should give them a good education bahu satya ancha sit pancha vinayocha susikkito bahu satya it means social experience we have to take the children to engage in many social activities religious social political environmental etc that means the child the child should be exposed to the society then actually the child understand how to behave in the society it is the experience right we we we, sh we should take them to participate in various social activities right and the other thing is bahu satya the sip professional education right not the other thing we should give the child a training in a profession right otherwise he cannot live no? in the society this is education professional education and social experience is the and also restrainment in a right that is the education then second step is education that's the third distance now the person has built up in a good environment and with good association and he has a very good social experience and also a professional education now he can earn something right because his professional education now we go to the third stage now this person can build up a family we we don't call it marriage it is family system we can build up a family 
who are the members mata pita pito pito patthanam uttadara sasangahu mother father wife husband and children this is the family now he can build up a family beautiful family he has to perform his duties towards the family members that is his first duty right now it is a beautiful family that is number 3 right now we are living in a society we are not living separately out of the society we have to keep a good social connection therefore now first we have to do our duties towards the family members now we have to do our duties towards the society what is that dananca dhamma charyaca jataka nanca sandaho ana vajjani kammani etam mangala uttama we have to do dana arms giving that's religious duties dhamma charyaca jataka our relatives and friends there are many we have to perform our duties towards the uh, friends and relatives and the clergy clergy or religion right that is social development right that's the fourth stage right childhood then education family family life social duties that's number 4 right i am not changing the order of the stanzas eh? then now you know <clears throat> now we have done our family duties and also we have done the social duties now because buddha has not given the age limit it depends on the person right we cannot give a universal age limit for these stages right because we don't know how long someone is living no therefore we cannot give a universal rule for uh, in this stage this should be we cannot do therefore we can apply now we can imagine by this time he may be about 65 years old right now he is an adult right he is an adult or she is an adult therefore the adult people should have an exemplary character they should provide the example for the modern the, the young generation therefore you know next stanza says arati virati papa madhya pana cha sanyamo appamado cha dhamme suvetam mangalam uttama arati virati papa we have to refrain from evil actions arati virati papa madhya pana cha sanyamo especially we have to refrain from drinking alcohol and taking drugs right that is exemplary character right arati virati papa madhya pana cha sanyamo appamado cha dhamme we have to vigilant to be vigilant in activities that is the fifth stage exemplary character right now now the fifth character, fifth stage now we come to the sixth right now you know now actually he may be 70 right 75 now all other sciences are useless right they have to understand only the nature of the life what happens to the life huh? what is the meaning of life etc no actually all these aspects are explained in dhamma what we call dhamma is the life science we have to learn dhamma that is why in the next system it is says actually we have to develop soft skills also in this life because sometimes you know adults are very arrogant they are not obedient actually we have to be very humble in this stage right in the old stage that means you know gara vocha nivatocha we have to be uh, respectful for others and for myself and gara nivato nivata means very humble gara vocha nivato santutti they should be happy all the time right garavo cha nivato cha santutti katanyuta we should be gratitude we should show our gratitude to others right katanyuta kalena dhamma savanam we have to listen to the dhamma in proper time right uh, that is you know understanding dhamma and developing the uh, spiritual aspects right or oh, soft skills next one also same next stanza says khanti patience we have to be patient when we grow old right 
can teach us so much asata. We should be obedient because, you know, some are very arrogant. They don't, when we grow old, we don't care about others' advice. No, no. now we should be very obedient to our other members of the family. Right? Garavocha, Nivatocha, Santurthi, Chakata. Then, Kantija, we should be very patient. Sovacha, Sata. We should be very uh, obedient. Right? Because we don't know now they cannot uh, handle their own life. No? They don't know what they are doing in old age. Therefore, they always should seek uh, advices from others. No? Right? Then, you know, Kantija, Sovacha, Sata, Samanananja, Dasana. We have to visit the temple and church or Kovil all the time, right? In possible times. Uh, we have to engage in Dhamma discussions, right? In order to uh, develop our understanding of the Dhamma. That is the uh, next stage. That means uh, number six, no? Number six, right? Stage six. Then the last one. Now you know, maybe now, these persons are confined only to the bed. They are sleeping, no? But they are can they can develop their mentality. Tapocha Brahma Chariancha Arya Satchana Dasanang Nibbana Satchikiriyache Tamangala Muttaman. Meditation, Tapocha, Brahma Charya, very pure life, right? We have to keep lead the pure life. Tapocha Brahma Arya Satchana Dasanang, understanding the four noble truths. Suffering, cause of suffering, cessation of suffering, and the path leading to the cessation of suffering. This is uh, Nibbana Sachi Kiriyat. We have to try to realize Nibbana, right? And Puttasa Loka Dhammehi Chittangasana Kampati. When we face with the eight natures of the world, Laba gaining, Alaba losing, Laba Ayasa, uh, ill fame, fame, right? I say after ninda, blaming, phrasing, ninda, suffering, and happiness. When we face with these eight natures of the world, we should be able to keep our mind motionless. That's the final stage. Now you see how beautiful way of life is recommended under seven stages through Mangala Sutta. Every Sutta has such a plan. This is called planning of the discourse. Right? In the future, we will discuss. Then, if we know this Buddhist way of life, then when we are doing counseling, we can recommend it. Right? Otherwise, you know, if we don't know these things, how to counsel? How to do counseling? Right? Then, first of all, we should understand what, the, what Buddhism says, life. Huh? What we have to do. What are the stages? What are the problems? Then also, you know, actually today I uh, uh, thought of giving that uh, management of mental processes also. But anyway, next day we will discuss, right? Then today keep in mind, because uh, there, there is the saying that, you know, people learn mass communication, right? They know the methods of communication, but mostly they don't know what should be communicated, right? That's the problem. Also, we are learning counseling methods, but we don't know what should be counseled, right? Therefore, these are very, very important because counselor should know what is Buddhism, right? What is the Buddhist way of life? What is the system, etc.? Eh? Then, you know, uh, next day, from next day, you we have to discuss many such graphs, new ideas regarding these things, right? Therefore, I think uh, for the time being, it, it is enough. Hmm? Then, uh, if you have any Question today. You can, we can give some time uh, to ask questions. Also, you can send them uh, by email, and in the next session, I will try to explain them. Eh? Please, uh, if you have any question, please present now. <laughs>